I would now, now like to read the message by Justice Sen. It goes as follows. To the President of the SCBA, the Supreme Court of India is often spoken of as the most powerful court in the world. This is because it has constantly traversed new vistas of legal remedies, navigating obstacles and potholes along the way. Public interest litigation is an example to mention only one. This court has taken human rights to unparalleled heights internationally. Protection of the poor and care for other vulnerable segments of our society has received the unflinching concern of this court. The fruition of this endeavor has only been possible because the Supreme Court Bar Association has always been a supportive fellow traveler of the court in the advancement of law. I anticipate that the Supreme Court Bar Association will, in the future, dedicate even greater time, effort, and resources to give circuit to every hapless, helpless citizen who, but for its support, would only wallow in his dearness. My prayer is that with each day, month, and year, this bond between the bench and the bar will become even stronger. Thank you, sir. This is a lovely message, and we promise you that we would always remember your words and follow them. In the end, it's time to thank everybody who's made this occasion so special and emotional. We are greatly we are extremely grateful to Honorable Justice Vikramjeet Sen for accepting our invitation. Mrs. Vikramjeet Sen, wife of Justice Sen, and other family members for accepting our invitation for gracing this occasion. Thank you, ma'am. We are extremely grateful to Honorable Mr. Justice T.S. Thakur, the Chief Justice of India, for accepting our invitation to preside over this function. I also wish Honorable Mr. Justice Vikramjeet Sen, a very happy, healthy, and enjoyable life ahead. I thank Honorable Justice T.S. Thakur, the Chief Justice of India, for presiding this function. I also thank all the judges of the Honorable Supreme Court for being part of this function. Honorable retired judges of the Supreme Court, Honorable judges of the High Court, the learned additional solicitor general, learned law officers, the Secretary General and Registrars of the Supreme Court for all their cooperation, the press, electronic media, office bearers and members of the EC of different bar associations, including AOR Association and other distinguished guests. And I would also like to uh, thank our senior advocate from the bar who has been guiding us, Mr. P. P. Rao, Former President Mr. P. H. Parekh, Mr. V. Shekhar, Mr. Sundaram, Mr. Sethi, Mr. S. P. Singh, and many other senior advocates who are present and because of whom we get our identity and move forward. I also, in the end, like to thank my entire executive committee for their support and guidance. And if this program has been a success, it is only because of your help. I'm very grateful to all of you. And not to forget the effort that has been put in by the staff members who have worked day and night for the last two days to make this event a memorable, a memorable one. I'm very, very grateful. In the end, I invite everybody for tea, which is outside in the lawns, and hope to see you there. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Honorable Chief Justice of India, Justice Thakur, my honorable companion justices of the Supreme Court of India, Mr. Siddharth Mridul, Judge of the High Court of Delhi, Mr. Dushan Dave, President of the Supreme Court Bar Association, Mr. A.K. Sinha, Vice President, Mr. Gaurav Bhatia, Honorary Secretary, and members of the Executive Committee of the Supreme Court Bar Association, President and members of the Supreme Court Advocates on Record Association, 
Mr. Narasimha, additional uh, Solicitor General, esteemed senior advocates and distinguished members of the bar, Secretary General and Registrars of the Supreme Court of India and members of the Registry of the Supreme Court. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to all of you. I'm truly honored that so many of you have been willing to endure this cold December evening to bid me farewell. I consider myself extremely fortunate to have been elevated, firstly as a judge of the High Court of Delhi, and thereafter as the Chief Justice of the High Court of Karnataka. I say that I am fortunate for the reason that there are several advocates from the bar who were equally competent lawyers but were denied the experience that I have been enabled to enjoy. When I took oath as a judge of the Delhi High Court, neither I nor my family expected that I would be posted as a Chief Justice of a state. But that happened. Elevation to the Supreme Court of India was something of a dream, but that, I was lucky, was fulfilled. Having been bestowed with the honor of being appointed as a High Court judge, and keeping in mind that a judge is discharging duties as a deputy of the divine, I seized the opportunity with both hands, knowing that a heavy burden had been cast on me. I resolved to work with honesty and diligence, humility and patience. Most of all, my endeavor was to keep in perspective that it is the poor and the disadvantaged who approach the court with trepidation at extreme financial expense and great personal discomfort only when all other doors are closed to them. Bearing the expenditure of litigation for the middle class and for the poor means an almost unreplenishable uh, uh, drain on their savings. I tried to give them preeminence. So far as the rich and powerful are concerned, litigation for them is often used as a tool to achieve more than what they des deserve. In discharging my duties as a judge, I have been ever mindful of the oath that I have taken, namely, complete surrender to the Constitution of India. My duty to uphold the sovereignty and integrity of our great country and to duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment perform the duties of this sacred office. These duties must be performed without fear of any possible adverse consequences or of criticism that any of the decisions may cause. The judicial function must be carried out with that affection towards any party or any council. Equally important is that there should likewise be no ill will or bias against anyone. Only then can a judge uphold the constitution and the laws and be true to the oath that he has taken. I hope I have succeeded, at least in some small measure. All these events which have happened to me and my family, as happens to each and every one of us, is because we are mere pawns of destiny. As a child, 
I recall my, uh, my fascination for going under bridges. There were not many in Delhi, but there was, I can remember two, Minto Bridge and Harding Bridge. On one of these occasions, after going through a bridge which is on our right, enjoying the descent and then the ascent, I passed a building, I must have been about less than 10 years, I passed a building and while my father was driving, I asked him, what is that building? And he said, that's the Supreme Court of India. And I said, I would like to work there. I have been lucky that that ambition which I had without knowing anything, without knowing what, what it entails, has come true. I can only share my good fortune with you, knowing that there are several who are equally deserving. Today, the success of an advocate is assessed primarily from the amount of money he earns. The manner in which he does so is often ignored. The issues that he espouses or fails to support in his own way are lost sight of. Ethics and principles should not become relics of the past. Women and child issues improving the the, law, the lot of the poor must receive highest priority. This profession must live up to what it has always been called, the noble profession. My heartful thanks go out to my family, my wife Malti, my daughter Manvi, and her husband Rohit Sarkar, my second daughter, Shunali, and her husband, Hemat Mandal, who are in Hanoi. My youngest uh, daughter, Mrinali Sen Gupta, and her husband, Satyajit Gupta, both of whom are lawyers. My thanks to my private secretaries and to the staff of my home office and my court masters and all the court staff assigned to me. My grateful thanks and acknowledgement goes out to my law researchers, past and present, but for whom the duties of the Supreme Court judge would, have, would be unbearably burdensome. I thank them for ensuring, most of all, that the work that was done in my chambers was without blemish and, with, and what did not compromise any principles. Mr. Dave, Mr. Sinha, Mr. Narasimha, and, and Mr. Bhatia have spoken very kind words for me, which I gladly believe, even though they are not true in entirety. What do I say about the Chief Justice? It is so difficult to, to address a gathering after him. I was hoping that there would be a difference in the order and that I would be able to give up the mic for him, knowing that you are very interested in hearing what he has to say. Except for, for uh, uh, I think he has been remiss.